or I'm sorry, secure request lifecycle. Um, the request lifecycle, for anybody who has never heard the term, is the state of a request from the time your browser sends it to the time it's finished rendering in your browser. There's a lot of things that happen between point A and point B here. Um, some things just to call out. I'll use my handy little laser thing here. So right here, this is a biggie. This is something that gets ignored a lot. Headers are dangerous. <laughs> a lot of people don't think about the fact that you can do things like pollute headers or split them or inject commands into headers that get executed. Um, so this one gets left, left out of security a lot. Resource access control check. Are, are you allowed to access the thing that you're trying to get to? Pretty standard. Um, and then beyond that, then you get into the identity and auth authorization of your identity to access that same resource. Then we come in here and we validate our data, we do our business logic, we handle the content, we encode just before we return the response, log it, and clean up. That one gets forgot a lot too. So that is what a secure request should look like. Does it always look like that? Probably not. So now I'm going to uh, kind of switch over here and show you guys some, some code, which is probably the main reason you're here. So here's a web page. Pretty simple, sorry, I, uh, I had a lot prettier application to work with. Unfortunately, I lost a USB drive, which has never happened to me. So I wrote this at about midnight last night. This is a really, really simple application. It has something that probably every application you've ever written or used has. Login, right? Another thing that gets used a lot as I mentioned, the HTTP headers. So what I've done here is I've just written a quick, easy page that is a very simple application that doesn't do anything that allow you to log in. However, does anybody use Spring Tool Suite? Anybody that wrote software? I just started using it. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. I, I, I wrote a web application in three hours with it, so. Give me just a second here. So here we are. This is the page we are looking at. Maybe. This one? Spring Tool Suite. It's basically Eclipse on steroids for spring. So you'll see some sappy for J JavaScript stuff in here. Just ignore that for now. Um, if I have time to get to that, I, I was hoping to kind of demonstrate some of the cool stuff we're doing there. But main thing we want to look at here is here's our form. Anybody see a problem with that? Oh, I killed it. The uh, demo gods were smiling earlier. Apparently, they are no longer smiling. We'll do this a different way. Oh, 
boom, XSS, right? Everybody's seen this. Nothing new to see here. So how are some traditional ways that you might solve that problem? Well, if we look at the code, it's obvious. The problem is that we're just grabbing username directly off the request. And then down here, oh, maybe that's why you guys didn't see the bug. I didn't go down far enough. Right here, we're just outputting whatever we grabbed right off the request. Everybody knows that's bad, right? In the past, you could have done something like maybe you've got some library out there, or maybe you'd see out that, or maybe you'd uh, have your own kind of regex thing that stripped out HTML tags. Whatever, whatever you did, you would have some means, some method you would call against the username variable to make it safe to display. With a SAPI, I know that I want to display this inside of an HTML attribute. So all I need to do Boom, right there, encode for HTML attribute. Save that guy out, whoops. I'll get it yet. All right, now I'm going to refresh exact same parameter on the URL. Boom, done. No XSS. Very simple problem, very simple solution. Now, obviously, this is tip of the tail. You know, this, this should be taken care of in just about every application out there. However, the, the concept behind showing you that is to show you that when you actually start using it, it's that simple. And it needs to be that simple. Um, a developer should not have to think when they're trying to write something out to a page, well, what context am I going to be using this in? Well, here I'm going to be using it in HTML. And maybe up here I'm going to be using it in CSS. But I'm going to use the same variable multiple times on the page. Well, in that case, you probably wouldn't do it in line like this. You would actually do it where you're outputting, which is where we normally recommend you do it. Excuse me. So now that you've actually seen the Asapi in action and the demo gods have uh, kind of come back around to my side, run through the uh, kind of the installation of the Asapi real quick. I'm just going to kind of breeze through it. It's really pretty simple. Um, are you guys that are developers, do you use Maven or Java? OK. So with this project, I actually use Maven. There's similar utilities out there for, actually, I think Maven works for most languages now. So in Maven, you've got this thing known as the POM, which is where you describe your application. Uh, SAPI was built with Maven, so it's very, very easy to actually use in Maven projects. You literally add it as a dependency, and you're done installing. Um, if you're not using Maven, it's simply a matter of visit our site, download the library, you extract it. There's an installation manual included with every language, regardless of which language you're using. And, uh, but basically what it entails is drop the library out in your library's directory, copy over the, re the configuration files, which I'll show you here in just a second. Those, those provide a starting point for you. And plug and play. 